another ants on a rock video welcome to the ant corner massive multi-species vivarium episode 12 a roar look round the tank hey there ant fans this is another one of those times where all the footage i took just kind of doesn't make sense so I'm going to show you some cool footage at the end of this video and I'm just going to do some kind of raw filming right now. Give you a little bit of a tour around the tank as it's happening right now and show you what's going on. So, if you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to press that little subscribe button. Even give this video a little like. All of that kind of stuff helps me produce better videos in the future. And whilst we're on that subject, Here's a big announcement. I currently do two multi-species episodes every month. I am now going to reduce that to one a month. Mainly being, I just want to spend more time on these episodes so this just doesn't happen. I can get all the footage I want to get and really spend time editing and getting the video just right because I want to make these videos good for you. I will continue to put out the two videos every week at least and loads of extra bonus videos and shorts as you've been getting more recently but I just want to make sure that I'm putting out at least one really decent episode on this multi-species tank because I think it's really worth putting that little bit of extra effort in and a little bit more focused just on what's going on in this tank if that makes sense if you think that's a good idea or if you don't think it's a good idea feel free to leave me a comment now let's have a little look at what's going on as you can see the red lights have turned on which means it's gone past half past ten the main lights will turn off at eleven o'clock this means there's no kind of time where there's no light, they overlap. Um, and then the red lights turn off at half past six and the normal lights turn back on at six. So there's always the lights on. Obviously, as we know with ants, most ant species cannot see red light. So this is how I get to see what's going on during the night. Um, most of the insects I keep in here also don't see red light as you can see I've chucked in some cucumber just a few hours ago not much activity there which is strange we've got a beetle one of our darkling beetles these produce mario worms I have a little wander around the pond area sorry for any reflections or shaky camera footage this is me holding the camera. We normally get one of the crabs sat down here currently. So we'll see if one of the crabs is down in between these two rocks. Can't see. Mm, yes, there is a crab right there. So yeah, we've got one of the crabs hiding between those rocks down there. Um, we also get Mr. Krabs coming out of his tunnel down here behind the log. Um, the other night I actually came out and caught him bringing out all these bits of stone, which means he might have broken through into the drainage layer of the rest of the tank for a deeper burrow, which is absolutely fine as long as he's happy I don't really care what he does to be honest as long as the insects are happy I will make the environment work for them well, we got beetles as you can see loads of isopods it's kind of weird this piece of cucumber hasn't got many on it but these little black pieces I'm pretty sure that's isopod poo so they have been on it we look further to the back there is some isopods back there they've actually started taking to crawling on the plant matters uh, the plants themselves as well 
So if we look carefully, we might spot some. In fact, if we go over to this fern here, and zoom in, there you go. Isopods on the inside of the fern. And they just seem to eat all the little leaves as they're starting to spout. But this is okay to me. Again, that's a bit of uh, control for the growing leaves, which I'm constantly having to cut back. I soon have to cut this one back because it's about to reach the top in the next few days. But where I've been cutting the top section here, you can see it's actually sprouted out either way. That's a really, really positive thing. Um, it's like um, you're cutting it to shape it, so it's now refusing to grow up because it knows there's just no point. So it's starting to grow out to either side to try and find that place where it's able to grow. And I actually wanted it to grow back there because if you can see, if that gets a bit stronger, and even this one, if it comes out down here a bit, I'll be able to cut and tame that to come back down here. It would just fill out the tank a bit more, giving it that extra layer of height without again encroaching on the barriers. So that I'm really quite happy about. The stick insects have been living on there a bit. Um, I do see them occasionally. If we can spot any, I will shout about it. Can't spot any of my stick insects right now. Stick insects, stick insects, where are my stick insects? Nope, no, I'll give it up. Right, moving on to the more interesting area. This is where I tend to do most of the actual main feeding, most of the protein feeding anyways. You can see there's a couple of carcasses, but they tend to actually get completely eaten by, I suppose, the isopods and metapedes and stuff. Um, as I said, I fed some cucumber, and isopods love cucumber. This is what I call isopod corner. Now these are just tropical grey isopods, um, just the standard ones that you can buy online, I think at Swell Reptiles and places like that. They go really kind of hand in hand with springtails in any bioactive environment, eating any mould or uh, kind of remains that your ants just leave about. Now this is a really healthy population like I say, which means I don't actually have to do much other maintenance around the tank. They have actually killed off most of the mosses though because they they tended to eat at the ends of the mosses and yeah with the ants pulling at them for stuff to build with, it's just destroyed all the mosses in the tank really, which is fine, whatever, I say whatever's natural, my fetonia's still hanging on. This hasn't grown since I planted it. It hasn't died, hasn't grown, hasn't done anything. And they've started eating it now, so it's probably not going to last much longer. But it's just kind of there. It's sat there doing nothing. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, springtails and isopods. Really important in a bioactive environment. I've actually got loads of other creatures in here to help with the bioactiveness. The like earthworms millipedes um, they all help with the breaking down excess matter and stuff like that and they help keep the soil really fertile as well which is why the plants just grow insane um, obviously we've got beetles in there we've got mario worms living under the soil with the millipedes and the earthworms um, stick insects and polyrachis dives which are living here now if we look the drones are out again. I think that's two drones fighting. If we just stabilize the camera a minute. I think that's two drones fighting, not a drone and an elate. That is two drones fighting. As you can see here, that is an entrance hole to the nest in there. Really cool, really interesting to watch. Anyways, so the drones, I've been told they tend to get quite aggressive around this time of year. Obviously, just to build up a testosterone and whatever their kind of ant hormones are. I don't know if they've got testosterone or if it's the same thing. But it's the same sort of thing as that, you know. It's those manly needs have built up and now they need to fight about it. 
So moving on from that, we'll look to the satellite nest, which has been expanding rapidly daily, day by day. Originally, oh, we're going to have to change the camera angle to get higher. That's better. Right, originally, it was just this back section going up here. Now they've incorporated more leaves, pulling them in. Again, these are weaver ants. Polyrachis dives are weaver ants. They are arboreal and they collect all the bits of debris and plant matter and they use their larvae to weave them with some silk produced by the larvae into their nest, into these structures, which are really cool. And from what I've seen, they're sort of like a honeycomb on the inside, because for some time you can see against the glass on these ones, but then they covered it over and I can't see anymore. But it did look sort of like a honeycomb. It was really interesting, actually, really interesting. So that's that, and like I say, it keeps expanding and getting bigger and taller. It stopped there because I put rubbing alcohol just above it. You can see the line. And that, I didn't want them building up to the barrier because I expect they could probably build their way through it. I'm not 100%, but they probably could. And the smell of the rubbing alcohol tends to deter them from the barrier, regardless of the barrier itself. When it's freshly put on, they tend not to go anywhere near it. So I did that and it literally worked the treat. It deterred them from building any higher and they started building out to the side, which I think is a really super cool structure. Early mornings, normally when the sun just starts to come through the window behind and hit this part of the nest, you'll see hordes of ants running back and forth, carrying eggs and larvae from this side into this side, and normally pupa going back that way. This is probably because pupa like drier areas, so the sun's starting to dry out that area, whereas this is probably a bit more moist. It's getting a bit of airflow from the fan in that corner. So there's airflow, um, humidity coming straight from the pond. So this is probably a slightly more moist area. And then they do still nest in the jug, which would probably be very moist. So that would be perfect for the eggs. I have no idea where the queens are, or even if I have more queens now, because I've had so many drones. Um, I've been getting alive drones like this for the last probably month. And for a good month or so before that, we were getting drones brought out one by one, dead already. Which could mean that they've mated, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see if, well I suppose we'll never really see. But it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how this colony grows with the ability to breed more queens within the nest. Now, isopods, where I'm coming from, we tend to call them chicky wigs. So these chicky wigs can be right little nightmares to everything else. You'd think the ants were bad. It's not actually the ants that you got to worry about. The isopods will eat everything if they get the chance. I try and keep the food well stocked, uh, the tank well stocked with food, as you can see. And But they will even fight between themselves for these huge lumps of cucumber. That's a bit of sweet potato that was there from a few days ago, sort of dried out. It hasn't gone mouldy, again because of everything that's eaten it, the springtails, the isopods, everything that eats the vegetables and whatever, or the mould will stop it going mouldy whilst the isopods or whatever eat it. So that's all really handy and it works really well. We do have millipedes in here somewhere, but they tend not to come out until it's the main lights go off. So I think I've got some footage of the millipedes to actually show you from just the other night when they were starting to come out. But again, I just couldn't make sense of all my footage and I couldn't make it into a good episode that I wanted to show you. So I thought this would actually be more interesting, having an actual look at the tank, what's happening as it happens, uncut, or pretty much uncut, 
all the cuts that you have seen in this it's just been me pressing stop and start again and a tiny bit of editing but I just thought the raw footage would be really cool for you to see we go along into the pond section so the water comes out of waterfall which has built up a nice thick bit of algae around it again the crabs love to eat the algae and they love to eat the duckweed as well so that's a great environment and then what you can actually see is there's layers of carbon all around the uh, the bottom of the waterfall all around under that big log and in the base of the pool section now the carbon is really important for anyone that knows bioactivity the carbon is what filters the water um, stops it turning nasty basically and spreading bacteria so with the water flowing getting re-oxygenated and then flowing over the carbon this is pretty clean water it's all mineral water as well I try not to use water from my tap but I have done in the past and it actually hasn't made a massive difference so sorry you could see my hand there yeah it hasn't made a massive difference on the times that I have had to use water from my tap but I do try and stick to mineral water when I can but we do have several crabs in here Mr. Krabs is our biggest we've had him the longest um, and they do venture out mainly at night time all around the tank to climb up this log here and up the back and they've even built a little tunnel here which comes out from under their cave which I think they live in sometimes but I don't know they just kind of appear out of all sorts of little crevices and disappear again it's really interesting to watch they do go into the back section so I've actually taken the the rock roofs off, it's used as balloon in the corner. Um, yeah, I've taken the rock roof off that back section. So it's just open and exposed. I don't really mind seeing that pipe. I forget about it even being there. But it's the only bit of unnaturalness, I suppose, that you can see when you're looking around. isopods down here I keep seeing the bumblebee millipedes they've grown really well actually the bumblebee millipedes have probably doubled in size again since I last put them on camera so I, I'll see if I've got some footage of that to chuck on as well right that's probably going to be enough of me waffling on because I can talk for England as anyone who knows me can actually agree Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be making some big effort in this channel now. We're nearly at 250 subscribers. When we hit the 250, I'll be doing a big giveaway um, to celebrate it, obviously. So make sure you are subscribed so that you get that little notification when I'm doing that giveaway. Um, as I said before, I will now be moving to one multi-species episode a month instead of two. But I'm hoping that the quality of these episodes will be so much worth it, it'll be well worth the wait. Um, I will continue to do at least four videos every fortnight, or two every week, sorry. At least two videos every week, and then one of those every month will be the multi-species episode. So, we'll carry on as we are. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. If you've got any suggestions of what you want to see in the future content in these episodes or any of my normal episodes or any of the bonus episodes or any of the shorts, just let me know. I'll make a little video and I'll post it about it. Also, don't forget I've got a Discord server. If you want to get involved, everyone's welcome. You can chat to me directly, you can give me suggestions and talk to me about the tank and I quite often ask you questions as well because I need help and opinions because I will just question myself otherwise so I like to have like a little committee that I can have to back me up on the decisions I make so it would be great to have you all involved so I'm going to put some stock footage 
I say stock footage, I'm going to put some footage on now that I've got over the last week or two. Couldn't make sense of it into an episode, so I'm going to get rid of half of it and just show you some really cool stuff actually. And as always, see you again, our fans. <laughs>